A family in a mad rush to get their two-year-old to the hospital ends up in a collision. The child is ejected from the vehicle. We'll take you to the scene with the night cam. Selfie here, selfie there, and now according to a federal judge, selfie everywhere. Also refusing refugees. A controversial resolution passes easily in an Oakland County town and it aims to keep refugees from resettling in one community there. Topping our news tonight at 11, Waterford Township, uh, Township rather unanimously passed the resolution tonight. That resolution is in response to the surge of Syrians, mostly women and children, seeking refuge from that country's civil war. Jason Colthorpe was there for tonight's meeting and joins us live. And so, Jason, did the meeting get kind of heated or? You know, Kim, uh, some comments were jeered on both sides, and you can understand why this really has become a hot button issue. Michigan was only recently surpassed by California as the nation's number one state destination state for refugees from Syria. Uh, more than 1,400 have resettled here since 2011, many in Metro Detroit. And as one person familiar with the resettling process said here tonight, two families here in Waterford Township, trustees here, at tonight's meeting made it clear that's enough, at least for now. A sign of opposition to a resolution to protect the township and keep Syrian refugees out. But the majority of voices here tonight back the board. And I want you to know that there's a lot of support in the community for what you're doing to protect us. Many echoed the same concerns in the resolution that Syrian refugees being resettled in the U.S. haven't been vetted enough and could be terrorists looking for a way in. How many bad apples does it take? How many dead Americans are we going to see because we are so compassionate? And I agree that we should push back and protect our rights, the citizens. Let's think of water for here. Let's don't think of that one dollar that they're going to promise you today and then take it away at tomorrow. Others saw it simply as unconstitutional and un-American. This resolution is unpatriotic. It's unconstitutional. What this resolution does is it puts a stain on every citizen of Waterford. It's a big stamp on our forehead that says bigot. Is the Syrian not our brother? And I'd like to believe that we as a community can rise to that occasion. The trustees were unanimous, with the township supervisor citing too many red flags brought to his attention by Homeland Security. But the bottom line is, until we're sure of this process, we got to protect what's ours. So what does this mean? Does it mean Syrians can't come here? No. As one trustee told me, the resolution is really not worth much more than the paper it's printed on. But what it does do is it sends a message to state and federal leaders that this is how they feel in Waterford Township. That's where we are tonight. I'm Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. So I'm wondering, Jason, is there something we might see in other places? This came about, Kim, uh, from a meeting of other Oakland County Township supervisors, and the supervisor here told me they were all on the same page. So the answer to the question is yes, but you might see them wait just to see if there's any fallout yeah. after what happened here tonight. Yeah. Okay, Kim. Jason, we appreciate it. Well, a family in a rush this evening ends up in an awful collision that ended with a toddler being tossed from the car. If you were with us at six, it was when we first broke the news. Tim Pamplin has been on the scene as emergency crews work to save her life. I'm along Connor at Gratiot near Detroit City Airport, a notorious stretch of road. Well, tonight, four people taken to the hospital, including a two-year-old baby. This family were rushing to the hospital to get that two-year-old to the hospital after she was taken ill. En route, they collided with this silver sedan. Now we have some video here of the medics as they were transporting this little two-year-old in arms to the back of that medic unit there, said to be in critical condition right now. Once medics have taken care of that baby, the firefighters then got the jaws of life out. There you go, focusing on cutting the father out of this vehicle. So again, a total of four people transported, three adults, and that one little two-year-old baby, the baby and her father listed in critical condition, the other two adults listed in serious. That's the scene right now along Connor with the night cam, Tim Pamplin, Local 4. And I talked to Tim a short time ago, and he was told the child was in a car seat, but was ejected because of the force of the collision. Amazing yeah, that child yeah. survived, yeah. A Detroit man is back in custody, accused of spray painting threats against police. Police say Stuart Lewis sprayed this graffiti saying kill police, kill James Craig. The first time he was arrested, prosecutors didn't file charges citing a lack of evidence, so Lewis was released. The chief went to top prosecutor Kim Worthy and Lewis was arrested again and now charged with threat of terrorism. 
Detroit police are searching for two men on an armed robbery spree. There, here's one of the men trying to rob the family dollar on Grand River near Fullerton Avenue earlier this month. He didn't get away with anything on this attempt. Not long after, they tried again at the Dollar General on Grand River. When the cash register opened, they pointed their guns and demanded the cash inside. If you recognize them, police are asking you to call. An elderly woman offered another woman a ride and ended up getting carjacked. Surveillance video here shows the 74 year old and the woman leave the McDougal market yesterday on the city's east side. While in the car, the passenger pulled a gun and stole the elderly woman's green Buick. The victim, though, was not hurt. Smile. We're taking a selfie. Yep. Uh, in a world where we're deluged with selfies every day. Oh, I guess we'll do it that way. There you okay. are. Every day. There was one that up until tonight was a violation of the law. Yeah, and here we are taking selfies right here. But now a federal judge in Grand Rapids says, have at it. Go ahead. You can post a selfie with your ballot this election day. And there's there what, we've got some what, there, here's, here's your selfie. This is what you look like tonight. Mara <laughs> McDonald is live with the story. Mara, this was actually a federal lawsuit against the state of Michigan. It sure is, Devin, and good evening. It is selfie night on the 11, and what that judge says is, hey, go ahead, take your picture in the ballot box or at the polling place. It's not a violation of anything and could potentially violate your First Amendment rights if you're not able to do it. You've seen them all over social media, in the voting booth, filling out the ballot, or at the polling place. And a federal judge ruled today that the state of Michigan prohibiting you from taking those selfies is more than likely a violation of the First Amendment. So come November 8th, have at it. I think there's going to be a lot of young people who are excited for whatever candidate they're backing. Uh, and they're going to be excited. And they're going to take a, snap, a selfie with their ballot because they're excited about voting, number one. And number two, they have been growing up in this uh, culture where everything's filmed, everything's selfied, everything's Snapchatted. In a world where we all seem to be genetically attached to our phones, is it any surprise that the ballot selfie is a thing? Michigan has had a law in the book since 1891 that says no taking pictures in polling places or voting booths. It was punishable by up to 90 days in jail and or a $500 fine. Now, most people had no idea the photos they were putting up on Facebook could land them in jail. The lawsuit against the state was filed by a guy who posted his ballot on social media having no idea he could be in trouble. I can't believe that actually made it to court. Talk about frivolous. Yes, this is what a real life federal lawsuit was about. And while reactions to the ballot selfie are mixed, hey, at least they don't get the same universal scorn of, say, the bathroom mirror selfie. Back here live, I think the best analogy that I've heard about this so far, it actually came from Jared Maynard tonight. He said, you know, the ballot selfie, it's sort of like the new I voted sticker. We're live downtown tonight. Mara McDonald, Local 4. I'm more interested, Mara, in knowing where you got that light for your phone. Yeah, that is a professional <laughs> selfie taker's case, isn't it? Hey, no, no, no. Oh, That's yeah. not no, no, true. No. I am not a professional. No, no, no. You totally gave yourself away with that one. Girl needs a good light, <laughs> yeah. though, Mara. That's that's awesome. We appreciate it. it. Yeah. Crazy, though, 1891. You think about how big think. a camera was. It, was. it took about 10 square feet back right. in those who, days. Who had so, a camera? They yeah. were afraid it was going to blow up, maybe <laughs> catch on fire. Healthcare <laughs> costs are going up for millions of Americans. Who will be paying double digit increases next year in just a minute? And dramatic dash cam video shows a wild shootout between police and suspects, but officers weren't the only ones in danger. Hi, Ben. Hey, Kim, all that sunshine that we did not see today finally showing up tomorrow. But look at how cold we're going to start the morning. Mid 30s to begin, and we've got some colder weather to get through the rest of the week. That's ahead. All right, Ben, but first, a look at a problem that is big and disturbingly common. Quite honestly, we're, we're not trained officially in handling some of these things. Rape victims not getting the help they need when they go to the hospital. How soon could it change? It's coming up. Coming up on Local 4 News today, tomorrow, counting down to decision day. Did you know tomorrow is going to be officially two weeks away from the election? So we are going to give you the very latest on the presidential election as well as prepare you for those big local races. Plus, focusing on fresh, non-traditional ingredients. See the local gourmet pizza place that also wants you to hang out in their living room. It's Tasty Tuesday. Oh, does that pizza look good? We'll also keep you updated every 10 minutes on the fours with weather and traffic. See you from 4.30 to 7 a.m. tomorrow. 
Yeah, I said no and stop on several occasions, um, but you know, that didn't seem to matter to him. A sexual assault victim shares her horrific story for the first time to spread the message that no victim is ever to blame, but also to ask a question when it comes to collecting evidence after their attack, is there a gaping hole in health care? I think it's been a gap that has existed for a long period of time. I, I know that medical professionals are not real comfortable with these kinds of cases. Well, after a sexual assault, the most important thing for a victim is to get medical help. Another important step is collecting whatever evidence there might be. But as Nick Monticelli reports, there appears to be a lack of training in that evidence collection. But there could be a fix coming from Oakland University. Think of this as a solution they wish they never had to come up with, but it will help the victims of sexual assault, child abuse, or elder abuse. And while Oakland University is the one putting on the program, it is the hospitals that are most excited because their patients are going to benefit. Okay, tell us all about it. Everyone knows children can cause commotion. Hey, but, but, you want to go in here? But it is a good thing because Kristen Zwang could use the distraction. Last year, a stranger came into her apartment and sexually assaulted her in her own bedroom. I said no and stop on several occasions, um, but you know, that didn't seem to matter to him. After the attack, Zweng went to an emergency room, but there was no forensic examiner there, no one to collect evidence. She was told to go elsewhere. I just put myself out there, you know, and told somebody what happened to me and there's no one there, like, I'm going home. I'll deal with it or whatever. The lack of forensic specialists is no surprise to those inside of hospitals. How many of the 10 blades do you have in here? At Crittenton Hospital in Rochester, Dr. David Bauer is the chief of the emergency department. This is not where Zwang went for help, but this is one ER where doctors are not afraid to be honest, admitting when it comes to sexual assault and evidence collection, not everyone has the proper training. This is not something that's in our wheelhouse. These are more legal aspects that, quite honestly, we're, we're not trained officially in handling some of these things. This would be our typical evidence kit. Fortunately, there is a solution. Turning Point, an agency that offers counseling, shelter, and more for abuse victims. They also have trained forensic nurses meeting with victims in their Clinton Township or St. Clair Shores offices. I think this is a better environment. Um, these cases should not be seen in the ER. There's just not the time. But while they do great work, there are not enough of them to do it. So we're just going to spend um, a couple minutes going over the syllabus. And if you have that is where Oakland University comes in Everybody's with a brand new the forensic nursing program. Kelly Bearshaw is the coordinator. It is the only program like it in the entire state and one of only a handful across the country. Forensic nursing is not part of the education that nurses receive. So having this program where nurses can receive advanced specialized education is a must because they're not going to get it any other way. The first year of the program was a success. Now more and more nurses will have this training helping put away sex offenders. It is a nurse just like this bubbles, bubbles everywhere. Everywhere. that met with Kristen Zwang. Her fiance convinced her to meet with a turning point forensic nurse who found DNA. For my nipples and um, also my vagina, they had to do swabs. And that DNA pointed to her neighbor and also linked him to other cases. He will spend the next 75 years in prison thanks to Kristen's courage and a forensic nurse. Afterwards, you can breathe. You know, there's a little bit of, of relief there because you know that it's finally over. You might not forget it, but the point is you went through with it. You did everything you had to do. In Rochester, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. What a courageous young woman. Yeah, we really appreciate her sharing the story. There's so many, there are enough roadblocks that keep women from Absolutely. taking those steps yeah. and to think that there is no point in it at all in the end anyway is just a horrendous yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Here's a look at what Sandra Ali is working on for tomorrow night. He's the teenage boy whose life-saving journey captured hearts all across the country. We're gonna stand up. We first introduced you to Trevor last year as he waited for a new heart and then finally got one. At first everything seemed perfect. He did well through the beginning part of the year. And now a crushing setback. My legs just 
felt weird, and then eventually they got weak. Tomorrow at 11, what happened to Trevor? The mysterious illness no one, not even doctors, can explain. Ben, tonight is what all that pumpkin spice stuff is all about, isn't it? <laughs> ah, that's, what, that's sort of what it feels Turn like. Turn the furnace on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, if you're out there raking leaves in the next few yeah. days, it's it's going to feel like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, don't do it before Wednesday. Okay. Oh, because right. we've got a lot of rain. A little rain. Comes yeah. in our direction. <laughs> uh, let's talk about what Actually, happened. don't put off till tomorrow what you can <laughs> never you what you can put off doing all together yeah, that's right I mean you go. just wait till after football on Saturday or Sunday <laughs> maybe wait till then but you know what satellite wise we started clearing out early this evening and that allowed temperatures to drop quickly uh, we dropped down into the 30s in some cases in a couple of locations we've actually seen those numbers uh, pop back up now there are uh, radar returns showing up across northern parts of the state and also out uh, in, at least over the Saginaw Bay and Lake Huron but uh, they're going to stay offshore. I don't think we're going to have to contend with those as we go through the overnight hours. Here are the current temperatures. Most of us in the 40s, but already down to 39 in Howell and 39 in Port Huron. Everybody's going to the 30s tonight and compared to where we were last night, 10 to 15 degrees colder even 20 degrees colder down in Monroe. So not only are we going to notice it tonight, but it is going to be a cold start in the morning. Even with the sunshine that we're expecting, high pressure settles in over top of us. That'll keep the winds light. It's also going to keep the skies fairly bright, but you can see the clouds do start rolling in here Tuesday night ahead of a lot of rain. Even though that low, the center of it is going to stay to our south. We're going to get tons of moisture on top of us. So Wednesday looks like it's going to be a soaker and we'll still see some of that shower activity hanging around on Thursday and then we'll finally dry out. But those are also going to be our two coldest days of the week. So just a, a, a wet and raw uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So low temperatures tonight are going to be in the 30s area wide. 38 will be one of our warmest numbers and that's going to be in our metro zone. A lot of low 30s, especially the further west you get out here in our west zone. 32 in Howell, 33 in Chelsea and Manchester and slightly milder here towards Lake Huron. That'll keep you in the mid 30s, but inland and Lapeer and even Oakland and Macomb counties will be seeing those numbers fall even further down close to the freezing mark in some locations. So highs only recovering, just barely touching 50 in the afternoon. We will see a lot of bright skies to start and then the clouds start rolling in here, but we do have a lot of rain in store for Wednesday and the first part of Thursday. 40s for high temperatures before we finally get the 50s back. And uh, we told you earlier at six that high temperatures have now or average temperatures, I should say, have now gone to the upper 50s. So we're going to be below average for each of the next seven days. Mm. All right, let's look time for a little good news. Uh, this, is, this is little pumpkins tonight, and this is four year old Alexa. Oh, how cute. She is dressed as Buddy the Elf and looks pleased as punch about it. <laughs> this is very clever. It seamlessly moves you from one holiday into the next. I yeah, it does Nicely sort of bridge done. the gap yes, there. Indeed. She's got the whole outfit. Good on you. Yep. Uh, more pictures come keep them coming in. We've got until Halloween. Yep. All right, Ben. Your doctor may be getting it wrong. The mistake many are making when it comes to treating sinus infections and earaches. And an officer shot at during a chase, but he wasn't the only one in the line of fire. We'll have that next. It's a ride along she'll never forget. A civilian was with a California police officer when shots were fired at their cruiser. Shots fired is right, and three of them hit the patrol car, but the officer and the civilian, neither one fortunately hurt. This all started when the officer tried to stop that car for a traffic violation near Fresno. Officers later found the car abandoned with the gun still inside, but the shooters have not been caught. Tonight, the Obama administration is confirming premiums for so-called Obamacare will rise sharply for millions of people next year. A mid-level plan will increase an average of 25 percent. Despite the increase in premiums, though, the administration says government subsidies will insulate most customers from sticker shock. The number of insurers participating in the program is dropping from 232 to 167. That's a loss of about 28 percent.
Now to good health, people with sore throats and ear infections are often being prescribed the wrong kinds of antibiotics or treatments to treat those bacterial infections. A new study from the CDC shows only 52%, so only about half of patients get the recommended treatment for things like sinus infections, which is basically rest and fluids. Researchers believe patients are requesting antibiotics and often just remember the one that's most easily memorable or pronounced, like the Z-Pak. Dr. McFrank.